Okay, in this video I'm just going to prove two really useful trigonometric identities. So we start with these trig formulae sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, cos theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tan theta equals the opposite over the adjacent. And there are two things we can, two, two, two really useful identities we're going to get here. So the first one is if we look at what happens when I do sine theta divided by cos theta, okay, so that's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse here divided by the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Now you know when you divide by a fraction it's you turn it upside down and multiply so I get the opposite over the hypotenuse and I turn the second one upside down and multiply so I get the hypotenuse over the adjacent just turning that upside down and now you can see when I multiply these together they've got opposite times hypotenuse, hypotenuse times adjacent so the hypotenuse is cancel here so I get the opposite divided by the adjacent and now the opposite divided by the adjacent is here that's tan theta okay so what I've shown is that sine theta divided by cos theta equals tan theta okay so that's uh, useful identity number one and actually because it's true for any value of theta I can use the three lines which means it's an identity not just an equation Okay, so that's one that's really useful. Here's the second one, and I'm going to look at what happens when I do sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Okay, so that means take sine theta and square it. Okay, so sine squared theta like this is just sine theta squared, it's just notation for that. So I've got sine theta squared plus cos theta squared, but we always write it like this. Okay, so that's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse squared plus the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse squared. So if I square a fraction, um, you square the top and you square the bottom, so I could rewrite this as opposite squared over hypotenuse squared and this one as adjacent squared divided by hypotenuse squared. Now they've got the same denominator to these two fractions, so I can combine them into a single fraction, which is, so I get the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared divided by the hypotenuse squared. Now, this is nice because the, this is a right angle triangle, so the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared by Pythagoras theorem is equal to the hypotenuse squared. The sum of the so the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So actually, this whole thing here I can just replace with hypotenuse squared on the top. And now I've got hypotenuse squared over hypotenuse squared. So anything over itself in a fraction, any number divided by itself, is just one. So I've shown that for any value of theta, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. So that's our second really useful identity. And again, because it's an identity that's true for all values of theta, you know, I can put the three equal sign here. Right? You know, and if you don't believe me, just try it with some value. So we could do sine of 65, I've got to remember to close the brackets here, squared plus uh, cos of 65 squared, and I should get one. Okay, um, that works for any angle. So two really useful identities here, sine squared plus cos squared is one, and tan theta equals sine theta divided by cos theta. We use these all over the place when we're solving uh, or dealing with equations that have trig functions in them. And there's a huge amount of maths that builds up from these that we'll look at in some other videos.